Hi, my name is Konstantin Baum. I'm a master of wine and today I'm going to do another ultimate wine glass tasting. After the last video, you had lots of suggestions on which glasses I should review next. And I decided that the most important glass is probably a great universal wine glass. So I have this selection of different wine glasses that I will blind taste later on in order to find the ultimate universal wine glass. And the worst wine glass will be destroyed. So let's go. <music> Nice to see you again. I've noticed that quite a lot of you watching haven't subscribed to my channel yet. If you like it, then you should put a ring on it or just subscribe and learn something about wine. Come on. If you look back at the history of the wine glass, you notice some trends and some evolution. The production of the wine glass as we know it, with a base, a stem and a bowl, started in the 1400s in Venice. But the wine glasses back then did not look like the wine glasses today. They were much smaller and this is due to different reasons. First of all, it just wasn't technically possible to produce these thin, light and clear wine bowls that we're used to today. Another factor is that form often follows function and drinking customs were just different until the middle of the 19th century. Wine was served by a server, chucked down, and then the glass was given back to the server. Only roughly around the middle of the 19th century, people started leaving the wine glasses on the table, and they had to be bigger as they were not refilled every time you took a drink. But way into the 20th century, glasses were mostly decorative and weren't designed to bring out the best out of the wine. In the 20th century, glasses got bigger and bigger, and there was also a larger diversity of different glass shapes released to the market. Riedel pioneered the introduction of varietal specific glasses and today there's a sea of different glasses for all different kinds of purposes. Even though I generally buy into the concept of using different glasses for different wines, I also know that this topic can be quite complex. It doesn't really help that the glass industry is making a lot of money by constantly promoting their newest glass as the greatest ever, using questionable science and sometimes outrageous marketing claims like these ones for example. The glass is maximizing the nose by re-harmonizing the aromas. The the tapering neck of the glass intensifies the aroma molecules which are positively hurled out of the glass and this glass acts as a gentle decanter that allows the flavors and aromas of the wine to emerge in the glass. I often taste a hundred different wines in one tasting and I wouldn't be able to do that if I changed the glass every time I taste a different varietal. This is why I ordered several different universal wine glasses and I will do a blind tasting to find the best one for my taste. The ultimate glass needs to be universal so I'm going to try it with two very different wines. One is a Riesling from the Rheingau and the other one is a red wine from the south of France in order to see which glass actually brings out the best out of both wines. The worst performer is going to be destroyed in order to make room for something new. I will write down all of the wine names including the prices below this video. The cheapest glass at 5 euros is the ISO wine glass that I got when I first started with my WSET courses. The most expensive one is the Zia Vision Straight at 50 euros a glass. I currently use the Riedel Veritas Champagne glass as my universal wine glass and that works quite well. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen that I just recently purchased the Riedel Performance Riesling wine glasses and I'm looking forward to trialing them. So for the blind tasting, I'm going to put on this glove and I'm going to be blindfolded and my wife is going to give out those glasses in a random order to me so that I don't know which one is which. Okay, let's go. This brings out the fruit quite nicely, so this is good. This is more hollow, less fruity, less good, so no. This is also less intense, so I would say nope. This is really weird. For some reason, the wine seems to disappear in this glass. No, I think this is not good. Okay, I gotta be honest, I kind of already know which one this is. It doesn't really allow the wine to show its full aroma, so I think this is not good. This is quite good. The wine shows quite a lot of citrus fruit here. It's quite bright. Nice. This is actually not bad, but it's not great. I mean, there were better ones, so I would say no. This one is actually the best so far. The flavor comes out quite intense and rich, even though this is a delicate and fine wine. But yeah, this is definitely a yes. Next. Finished. Okay. 
Let's find out how the glasses fared. I think this is also the first time I'm wearing two bandanas at the same time. Interesting. Okay. How cool is this? So my favorite glass, the Veritas Champagne, has done really well. Was that actually the last one? Yeah. So this was actually the one I preferred. Well, I mean, maybe I'm just so used to it. The new Riedel Performance Riesling glass also did really well. And this is the Gabriel glass. I know this is one of a lot of my viewers' favorites. So I'm also happy to see this glass performing well in this tasting. But now we're going to see whether the same glasses do as well, worse, better, whatever with the red wine. So let's go. Okay, round number two. Are you ready? Let's do this. Okay, the wine shows quite a lot of richness, vibrancy, you got fruit flavor and there are spice notes. So this is actually not too bad. I think this is a yes. This is slightly toned down, so it's not as intense. There's less spiciness there. It's not as complete, so I would say no. So this is quite nice. You get some fruit flavors, some prunes, cherries, but also licorice and spice notes. So this is good. Okay, this is different. It kind of elevates the licorice and spice notes and the fruit flavor disappears a little bit. It's also not as pronounced as the first and the third one. So I would say this is a pass. No, this is very nice. I mean, the flavor is quite elevated, quite intense, quite concentrated, uh, lots of fruit flavor, but it's a good combo of fruit and spice notes again. So this is very good. Yeah, it's kind of hard to mask the ISO glass. I certainly know which glass it is. And it's not terrible, but I think there's just not enough space there to really allow the wine to shine. So I'm going to say no. This is again really nice. I like the balance between the fruit and the spice notes. It's not as pronounced as the one before the ISO glass, but it's quite good. Okay, this is really nice. I like the flavor profile here. The wine is very, very much in balance. I can see that most of these glasses work much better with the red wine than the white wine, but this is a very nice combo. The wine feels really complex, lifted, fresh, vibrant, really beautiful. Okay, next. All right, that's it again. So let's see. I think I didn't discard as many glasses as the white one. I only discarded three glasses and I have five glasses that I liked. So interesting. This time the Sophienwald and the Salto made it in the lineup as well. But three glasses were in the lineup last time as well with the white wine, which was the Riedel Veritas Champagne glass, the Riedel Riesling glass and the Gabriel glass. So I think they have to be the winners of this tastings, tasting all three. And um, I'm not really sure which one I would prefer optically. I think the Riedel Performance Riesling glass looks really nice, but I'm definitely going to play around a little bit more with the Gabriel glass as well, because it did a really good job uh, during the whole tasting. Now the only question is which glass has to go. And I gotta say, it's time to get rid of this, I think, because it's just too small. It's not its fault, it's just too small. It just can't give the wine what it needs. So. so thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what could it else be? But what is your favorite universal glass? Let me know down below. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.